What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today we're taking a look at a modern cozy condo design and showing you some of the interior design elements, talking about a smart home tech setup that doesn't break the bank but at the same time it has a whole ecosystem and suite of products that all come together under one main hub that gives you a good optimized setup that works with any smart home system that you would like and can, can be controlled in just one app. I want to give a huge thanks to Akara for sponsoring this video and if you would like to win some of the items featured in this video just go ahead and drop a thumbs up up, leave a comment down below as to how you're going to use these products and also subscribe to the channel and leave your Instagram username down there as well because I'll be contacting a winner in one month. So now let's give you a bit of a tour of the space because it is super well put together in terms of the interior design touches and it really feels like a home. Which if you guys have seen some of my videos in the past, you might realize that even though I love to pick good furniture, I kind of struggle to give it that cozy feel and I feel like this place really implements great details of that. The way it's laid out is that you have the kitchen on this side and you have a very wide and grand living room over here that people were able to just sit around, chill out, but at the same time it's been separated in a few ways very nicely. Over here, there is a nice cabinet from Rove Concepts, and I'm a huge fan of Rove Concepts. I love the marble touch in the black contrasting color, and the walnut really does complement the light wood floors, but it also matches nicely with the rug and the couch over on this side. Just some accessories right here, which are ones that I actually have around my house as well. The Porsche Lego set, which I haven't had time to put together just yet, but also the history, um, the 70 years book in a nice brown leather material, while also having some space right here to be able to have any additional accessories or decor. And I also really enjoy the touch of the sliding that has gone on here. With the large windows and the small windows, having different elements of millwork on the walls can kind of split up the space, but also have a nice display area to keep some of the home tech. Another area that Brandon likes to work and just enjoy the view is this standing table here. It is custom made with a nice wood live edge material and metal legs to go along with it. And he used to have this behind his couch to be able to watch TV, but now it spans out the length of the window perfectly. So as we move over to the living room, the most impactful piece of furniture is this cloud inspired couch. It is known to be the comfiest couch that you can get for your house and you can literally fall asleep on it. It is just so cozy and soft and I love the light finish right here and it actually does stay pretty clean for the most part. It's definitely a couch that I want to add in one of my houses in the future but I just haven't really found the right place to put it but in this case because the living room of this condo is so wide it fits in nicely and you can choose to sit on either side of it while it also has some separation to the other areas of the space and the cabinet that we just looked at. This is also a cool touch. You have a black contrasting table right here where you can have your keys for grab and go, but the living room actually has one of my favorite pieces of furniture that I've really wanted for a while, and that is the Rove Concepts media table. And it is one that you're able to expand and contract when it comes to the size. It also sits very low to the ground, so it's a slim profile. I just really haven't had the space to put a piece of furniture like this, but the TV is also wall mounted and from the tech side of things, but the fact that it's all wired in the wall and is floating a foot above here really lines up with the couch so you don't feel like you're looking up too much. There's also a very stylistic chair right here that ties in with the sofa as well as the rug and it is also from Rove Concepts. It has like this nice leather finish right here and you kind of just lounge out and with as the light hits it right now, you can see the fur and everything it just really brings to that cozy aspect of the space. And yeah, I think like the biggest theme here is that paired up with all of the greenery, it is just so well put together and interior design while also having some decor elements that tie to some of his personal interests. So giving you guys a quick tour of the kitchen, it is a relatively large one. As you can see, the island spans all the way across and there are some good elements of improvements that have been made to an initial builder's grade type of spec where it's relatively simple to one that actually looks relatively well customized. Some of the things that Brandon did to this kitchen is he actually replaced the backsplash stone to what is Pietra Gray from Infinity Stone. It's actually what I also used in the shower of my new place and it goes along with the white stone which already looks pretty good and it's a quartz finish. 
So taking a look at the bedroom, this is actually the guest bedroom because Brandon uses the main bedroom as his home office. And some of the initial touches that you could see is the gray contrasting wall over here, which once again has the same type of contrast that the Pietra gray in the kitchen gives it. But these are also some slats that you can actually purchase online and they're fully pre-made. I've actually had custom slats made before in previous projects and sometimes they can be very costly and can take a while, but these ones are ready to go and you can just go ahead and pick the size and the height that you need and just have them shipped right to you. He also has a TV set up on this side, which has his vintage LV chest with the soundbar sitting on top. And in terms of the closet itself, he also made some modifications here in terms of having a custom setup built to have different elements of storage depending on his specific needs. So once again, you can see that it has the plants, it has a nice slatting and the dimension as well as a contrasting wall. And so this is a tour of the bedroom. So my friend Brandon just moved into this place and he spent the last couple months designing it and putting together some of the major interior design, furniture, decor touches, as well as tech elements. So this is kind of like the finishing touch when it comes to building a smart home automation and also optimized system. I really like checking out products where all of them are available under one company and especially when it connects to the main hub that also features the security camera. It just makes it a lot easier when it comes to the shopping and setup experience. Some of the items that I brought over to install include the smart plug, the camera hub G3, which is gonna be the central connectivity point for all of these devices, as well as the air quality monitor and temperature sensor, the door window sensor to detect when the door has been open or closed, a water leak detection sensor, which is one that I feel like a lot more people should be adding to their place, a control cube, and also a wireless mini switch to be able to easily turn your lights on or off using the smartphone app or your favorite smart home system, such as Amazon Alexa, Apple HomeKit, or Google Assistant. These products also work with if this then that, so the first product that is essentially the centerpiece of this entire setup is the Camera Hub G3. You can see it's relatively compact in its size and you're able to place it anywhere in the house that has a central view of the points where you want the security camera to be able to monitor and record if you need it to. It is one that I think fits in very nicely in a modern home. And on the spec side of things, it features a 2K camera and is able to rotate 360 degrees and also pan up and down. But on top of that, it also has AI recognition for familiar faces and also be able to detect certain gestures and commands that you set within it. It also has built-in Zigbee 3.0, which allows it to serve as an all-in-one smart home hub by connecting up to 128 Acara devices around your home, including different automation pieces, remote controls, sensors, and more. What I find specifically interesting of this hub in particular is that it has 360 degree rotation, but the camera itself also has 110 degree field of view. So it's able to rotate around and detect who's coming in and out of the house. And you can also have it send notifications as to who has arrived at homes. The 360 camera element also comes in handy because as a result of having different sensors connected to this main hub, for example, when the door is open to the balcony, this will actually rotate over to be able to capture the field of view from a security standpoint. That also applies to other elements of the house as the front door is open, for example, or anywhere else that you place specific sensors and commands. And it also features dual band connectivity through 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. The app itself then displays all of these notifications in an advanced timeline format that tells you which smart home element or security element was triggered or used at a given time, and also the video recording to back it up. And all the information is securely encrypted. So one of the first pieces that I add in essentially any smart home tech setup is a smart plug. And this right here has a few cool features up its sleeve, but it's one of those accessories that you just can't have enough of because you can use it on any plug around the house to control anything from some small appliances to a lamp. And personally, I have them all over the office. So in this case, we're gonna be connecting this over to a lamp and it not only allows you to trigger the lamp to turn on or off on your smartphone through the Akar app, but at the same time, you can use your smart home system voice commands, gestures, and more. What's great about this one in particular is that it connects via Zigbee to the smart home hub, which is then connected to the Wi-Fi. But on top of that, through the app customizability, you're able to set certain schedules for a lamp, for example, to turn on or off, or in some cases, some small space appliances that are up to 15 amps can also be triggered by this. So it allows you to save some power when you're not home during the day. Another handy feature is that you can also track power consumption. So if you want to go ahead and plug a certain appliance in it, you can see the given times 
of day where it's utilizing more power and maybe plan accordingly whether you want it to be turned on or off when you're not using it. So this next accessory is the wireless mini switch. It allows you to control different smart home accessories and commands with three different actions and it's a wireless button that you can store anywhere around the house. Maybe you have it in a drawer or you can actually use the adhesive loop and stick it on the wall for example. But maybe I want to like turn on the lights of a certain lamp. There is literally unlimited number of options as to what you can do with this button. But the best part about it is that the battery is two years and it has been rated up to 50,000 clicks. So it's very reliable. All it is is one large button, so it's really hard to miss. And through the app, you're able to set the command that you would like it to do at any given time. So perhaps one of the most important sensors featured in this video when it does actually need to be used is the water sensor. Considering its price, it can save you big time because obviously water leaks cause a lot of expensive damage and a lot of times are the root of some of the big insurance claims. This right here is a sensor that you're able to place in areas where there could potentially be leaks. And there's a threshold of 0.5 millimeters and it'll notify you right away as soon as it detects water. This itself is actually water resistant, of course, but say you place it underneath the sink or just behind your toilet or maybe next to where like water could potentially leak, it is pretty self-explanatory. But as I said, for the price, it is definitely an accessory that you should have as an aspect of peace of mind. Just like all the other products that we featured in this video, it connects all back to the smart home hub, which is the G3 in this case. So this next element right here is the indoor air quality sensor. It displays information when it comes to TVOC as well as the temperature and your humidity and it features an e-ink display. So you can see it's relatively small. You can either have it at your desk or your bedside table or you can just have it stuck to the wall. They include the adhesives to be able to do that. But it also allows you to track the long-term air quality health information on the app as well by collecting its data at any given point. The actual meaning for TVOC is the indoor VOC VOCs that come from everyday household samples, including sprays, aerosols, air fresheners, cleaners, and also many products such as glue, furniture, and carpets, as well as construction materials that can impact the health of your indoor air quality. So it gives you some information of the overall air quality as well as temperature and humidity, which I feel like are general pieces of info that are good to have through the triple sensors that is built into a very small accessory like this. So the door sensor is the next accessory here that you can either put on the balcony door or the entry door. And what's cool about that is beyond security and knowing when people are in and out is that you can also set it with different commands in conjunction with some of the other smart home products. So for example, you can have the lights automatically turn on as you enter the unit and as you leave, it will also turn them off. With the camera and everything, as it senses an entrance, it will also detect the face of who's arrived and notify you via the smartphone so having these certain sensors around different entry points of the house when it comes to windows, doors, and main hallways allows you to just ensure everything is secure. So the last piece right here is the cube. And there's six different functions that allow you to control different elements of your home tech setup, including flipping it, pressing it, rotating it a certain way. And it's just like a fun way to be able to control your home and also set different moods and commands. I would say that for the most part, people are gonna to wanna to use the button because it is the most straightforward, but by having multiple commands in this like fun accessory like this, it's just a unique way to be able to control your home tech setup if you prefer to. So when it comes to the home automation setup and how multiple devices from the Akara lineup can interact with each other, an example could be moving the cube to a certain configuration and turning a light on or off. Or another scenario could be whenever the balcony door is open, the door sensor will end up triggering the camera and it will actually rotate over to see if anyone has entered the house and start a recording. Another scenario could also be whenever a leak is detected in the water sensor, the G3 hub will actually have a siren that goes off to notify you right away. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video of the Akara Smart Home Setup, as well as this beautiful place. So let me know down in the comment section below of what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next video.